First things first, Mr. Sonnen, you are probably my favorite MMA figure ever. Whether it be in the octagon, in the UFC, to to what you did in Bellator, to what you're doing now, ESPN, uh, um, Ariel Hawani, MMA fighting, who knows? I, I I've lost count at this point. Um, but Mr. Sonnen, I I need to tell you something. I think I think you're wrong. I know you're not very wrong very much, but the the fifth round in the Izzy and Yan bout was scored a 10-8 on two judges scorecard. And I, I would like to say, I, I agree. I agree for many, many reasons that you might, probably you, you didn't take into account, but let me, let me lay it out to you. Um, uh, first, we'll start off with what your definition of a 10-8 round was you, in layman's terms. Um, and I quote, if the fight should have been stopped and the referee failed to stop it, the judge will then correct that by giving it a 10-8 round. Or, at minimum, within that round, it was eligible to be stopped for a TKO. Mr. Sonnen, that's your interpretation of the rule book. But the rule book is very, very subjective. I could read you out the entire 10-8 ruling that, that I could find online. And, and we could derive so many other conclusions to it. You know what? I, I'm going to read you. I'm going to read you a passage right now. A 10-8 round in MMA is where one fighter wins the round by a large margin. A 10-8 round in MMA is not the most common score a judge will render, but is absolutely essential to the evolution of the sport and the fairness to fighters that judges understand and effectively utilize the score of a 10-8. The score of a 10-8 is utilized by the judge when the judge sees verifiable actions on the part of either fighter. Now, I, I could go on and read the entire passage, but what I'm trying to set up here is that in order to get a 10-8, we don't necessarily have to abide by, the, by, by, by your layman's terms. There, there's other ways that we can give a 10-8 to a fighter in, in, in a bout, such as Izzy vs. Yon. Let me just let me just throw some stats at you. Um, this is objectively speaking. So we're looking at the stats that happened during the fifth round between the bout um, with Jan Blahovic and Izzy Israel Adesanya. Jan Blahovic landed 28 of his 47 attempted significant strikes. On the flip side, Izzy landed 12 of his attempted 29 significant strikes. Jan more than doubled. Izzy's output in this bout. Yes, a little bit a little bit over double because 12 times 2 is 24 and he he died in 28, but it's still more than double. Then we go in a little bit further. What happened during that bout? I want to bring to your attention the very last 10 seconds of the round. The reason why this is very, very important is within that last 10 seconds of the round, Jan landed about 10 shots. Yes, some of them were partial, but there's about four very, very clean shots to the head. And in the last three seconds of the fight, Jan transitioned to mount and was able to land very, very crucial strikes to the head. Yes, he was probably trying to like end, end the match and end the fight on a statement, was able to, to put an exclamation mark on there. But I think we need to look a little bit deeper than that. Jan was able to get mount and demonstrated that he was not going to lose that position. Why do I say that? For two main reasons. The first reason is Izzy from mount was trying to raise his hips and throw Jan off, but Jan was able to posture back up and gain his position and rain down a couple more strikes from that position. Izzy was against the fence as well. Where was he going to go? I'm saying in that position, Izzy was going to get finished. Izzy, as well, in those three seconds, also turned to the right. Now, that might have been to, to avoid some of the strikes and, and to deflect or, or to roll off of them, but maybe that was also to give up his back. We didn't really see him give up his back uh, throughout the fight, but maybe that was a situation where he was, he was, uh, was going to give up. He was in full mount and really had no other options left. He was stuck against the cage. Where is he going to go? The other thing that we have to bring up is throughout this whole fight, I, I challenge you, I challenge you to find a position, a time where Izzy was on the ground and was able to transition out or get back up. Every single position that he was put into, Jan was dominating him. 
Jan's game from the top compared to Izzy's game from the bottom is is unrivaled. You you can't it's proven. Jan in this fight really showed that when he's on top of Izzy, Izzy is not going anywhere. His entire game plan was to hold Izzy down, lay strikes, and then grab, grapple again, hold him down in position. Jan on many occasions could have transitioned to side control whenever he wanted, and potentially could have went to mount as well, but he really favored the half guard. Why did he favor the half guard? Because it's probably the easiest way for him to hold down Izzy. From side control, you did see Jan hold down Izzy, but he had to resort to using his left arm and putting it between Izzy's legs to, to prevent any forward or upward motion for Izzy to stand back up. Mr. Sonnen, I ask you, if that fight were to go another 10, 20 seconds, do you think Izzy would have survived? Do you think Izzy would have gotten up? Do you think Izzy would have would have survived any of the grappling attempts, any of the submission attempts? I, I don't think so. And that might also be what the judges might be thinking. The judges saw that he was in a position where he obviously and, and demonstrated that he could not get out of. And I believe if that fight went down, went for another 10, 15, 20 seconds, maybe 30 seconds, that fight would have been done would have been over and maybe I'm giving the judges way too much credit maybe they saw uh, Izzy being held down and and dominated dominated in in, in, in that sense and gave it a 10-8 but I, I also like to think maybe they gave it because of what I'm referring to Jan yes came to the mount position and was raining down shots but do we really just take that as an exclamation point or do we actually look at that position and review Izzy was not going anywhere. And, and as much as I love Izzy, and as much as I, I believe in him, and he will do great things at 185, and he'll eventually come back to 205. But I don't think he would have survived. I don't think he would have survived. And I kind of I kind of hoped I kind of hoped that that Jan would have went to full mount a little bit earlier and stayed at that position. Maybe he would have got that finish. But we'll we'll, we'll never know. Mr. Sunnan, I I agree with you. The Las Vegas uh, Athletic Commission is is probably one of the worst when it comes to judging, not only in MMA but also in the boxing world. But in this situation, I think we need to to isolate it. Um, yes, it's not necessarily the best 10-8 that we've ever seen, but I get it. It it's 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 a plausible 10-8 given the situation. Uh, from the beginning, but also especially at the end of the round. In my interpretation, if Jan is in full mount and raining down shots, and if you give Jan another 10 to 15 seconds, he would potentially finish the fight, I would go on to say that was a 10-8 round. I have to give that some sort of value. I have to, I have to reward Jan for getting that position and potentially finishing the fight. So maybe, maybe we, we have to work on, on, on educating or, or changing or, or creating less gray space when it comes to MMA judging. And then, then we, can, we can make steps forward into the right direction, like all these other commissions around, around the world. Other than that, thank you very much, Mr. Sonnen. I really hope that maybe we can change this, this painting into... Uh, an autograph poster of the bad guy. Um, I, I will mail you. I, I will mail you a poster of yourself so that you can you can bless us with an autograph. But other than that, thank you very much.